Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the letters of John and uh, the commentary by Cruz. We're going to take a look at our uh, continuation of 2 John. It'll be uh, verses 6 through 10. And uh, it's all about the criticism of the Gnostics who denied the Incarnation. They denied the Incarnation. So let's go to block one, take a look at verses six and seven. Verse six, and this is love, that we walk according to his commandments, that you heard from the beginning, you must walk in it. And in the Greek, this is love, that we walk according to his commandments, just as you heard from the beginning. In it, you should walk. And then uh, verse 7, Many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Christ came in the flesh. Any such person is the deceiver and the Antichrist. Many deceivers have entered into the world. Not confessing Christ coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the Antichrist. And then Cruz on 6 and 7, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That's John 15.10. So we have a cross-reference to the Gospel of John. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, as I abide in my Father's love. Believers are to walk in truth. Truth is emphasized because of what follows verse Seven begins because John links the Gnostics with the Antichrist, who will come at the end of the age. But it's all about walking in truth this time. It's not walking in love. It's walking in truth because he had elaborates in verse 7. The Gnostics will not affirm Christ came in the flesh. And true believers affirm that Christ did come in the flesh. True believers affirm the incarnation. Therefore, John warns against the Gnostics, and he says, walk in the truth. Walk in the truth of the gospel, which is Christ came in the flesh. Christ incarnate. It's going to Go on to block 2 in verses 8 and 9. Abide in Christ's teaching. Be on guard. Verse 8. Be on your guard so that you do not lose what we have worked for. So that you receive your full reward. Watch yourselves. He uses the word blepo to watch. So blepete. How to watch yourselves so you do not lose the things that you have acquired. That you receive back your full reward. And then verse 9. Everyone who does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides has the Father and the Son. Anyone. And here's the literal translation, and it makes more sense. Anyone going beyond, and it's implied there, the gospel, anyone going beyond the gospel, like the Gnostics, and not abiding in Christ's teaching, does not have God. But the one abiding in the teaching has the Father and the Son. So the Gnostics, according to John, were going beyond the gospel and adding to the gospel, saying that special gnosis was necessary. So John warns against going beyond the gospel. He warns against adding to the gospel. So if we look at verse 9, block 2, verse 9, everyone who does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides has the Father and Son. And it's all about that going beyond. It's all about going beyond. Pas ha proagan. 
anyone going beyond. That's what John's really saying. Anyone going beyond the gospel, anyone going beyond the gospel that Christ came in the flesh, anyone saying we need to add to the gospel, is a liar. Is a liar. So if you look at uh, the notes by Cruz, John's readers have been working for eternal life. Cross-reference John 6, 27. Work for food that endures unto eternal life, which the Son of Man gives to you. This work equals to believe in the one God has sent. John warns his readers not to run beyond the gospel to false teaching. Instead, they must abide in Christ's teaching. Period. So if we look at verse 10, block 3, do not receive into the house or welcome anyone who does not bring this teaching. If anyone comes to you who does not bear this teaching, do not receive him into your house. That's the order that it is, reads in the Greek. Whoever does not bear this teaching that Christ came in the flesh, do not receive him. John's readers are not to recognize false teachers as being in good Christian standing. They are not in good Christian standing. If they deny that Christ came in the flesh, they are false teachers. So block one is all about uh, walking in the truth. The truth that was heard from the beginning. You should walk in it. And then especially verse 7. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those are the Gnostics. They don't confess Christ came in the flesh. They don't confess the incarnation. And that person is against Christ. That person is anti-Christ. Earlier in 1 John... John said there are many antichrists. There are many Gnostics. So block one warns against those who are against the incarnation. And then block two, verse nine, he says we must abide in this teaching. We must abide in in the teaching that Christ is the one who came in the flesh, Christ incarnate. We must abide in that teaching. Then we abide in the Father and in the Son both. We have the Father and the Son. Both. And we are to work for food that endures. I like the cross-reference in John 6:27. Work for the spiritual food that endures for eternal life. And then it is further affirmed in verse 10 that anyone not confessing the incarnation is a false teacher and they are not to be welcomed. We must reject, we must criticize false teachers who deny Christ incarnate. A core truth to the gospel for John is that Christ came in the flesh as son of man to bring redemption to all mankind. It's essential that Christ came in the flesh. It's essential to the gospel. To deny that is to be against Christ. To deny the Incarnation is to be anti-Christ. So we get uh, great teaching on 6 through 10 here. And uh, Second John is so short, we just have uh, three remaining verses to wrap up Second John. So this is the penultimate lesson for Second John. That will wrap up verses 6 through 10 on being on guard against those who deny Christ incarnate.